Hello and thanks for joining me. I'm going to be teaching a new series starting today on the cross, the forgotten meaning of the cross. What happens when a church forgets the cross? I want you to think about two churches, Corinth, if you've read the letter of Paul to Corinth, he, he wrote two letters to them, and Galatia, Galatians. Now, in the beginning of many of his letters, Paul begins by thanking God for the church that he was writing to. For instance, he wrote to the Corinthians, a church where there was incest, adultery, drunkenness at the Lord's table, and he still thanked God for the grace given to them. He says in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 4, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God that's given you by Jesus Christ. So, knowing all that was going on in the church, all the sexual sin in particular that was going on in the church, he still said he thanked God for the existence of the church. But the other church I mentioned was Galatia. Now here, he doesn't even start by saying that. He doesn't thank God for their existence. In the first few lines of his letter, he says, I marvel that you've moved so far away from the grace of Christ to another gospel, which is not a gospel. See, legalism, as we shall discover in our study, of keeping church rules disturbed him more than open sin. In Galatia, they wanted to establish circumcision into the church, and that disturbed him more. It was church rules, you want to be a member of church here, get circumcised. That disturbed him more than all the sexual sin that was going on in the church at Corinth. Now, the apostle was angry in uh, Galatians chapter 3, reading from the Passion. What happened to you, foolish Galatians? Who has put you under an evil spell? Did God not open your eyes to see the meaning of Jesus' crucifixion? Was he not revealed to you as the crucified one? So there Paul is saying, listen, you've forgotten that Jesus was crucified. And that is, is classed in his uh, thoughts as a much bigger problem than sexual sin in the church. So despite having experienced the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Galatians, um, they, they experienced the gifts and they had many, many churches like that who experienced the gifts, but the true meaning of the cross has been lost sight of. Let me just read you that from, from Galatians again. I, I just love this, uh, this first verse in Galatians 3. You poor, silly, thoughtless and unreflecting and senseless Galatians, who has fascinated or bewitched you or cast a spell over you? Before whom, before your very eyes, the Messiah was openly and graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. So Paul was amazed. He, he was very angry about this. Now, what had happened? They had forgotten about the crucifixion. They put it aside. It wasn't the central teaching. You know, they, they got other things substituted as the central teaching of the cross. That was put to one side. They had forgotten. Now, I want you to get hold of this. They'd forgotten two important things. And this is what I want you to remember from this first video. There is no provision by any other means apart from God's provision in Christ through the cross, no provision. Now, perhaps you've been uh, praying and sweating and, and fasting and doing all sorts of stuff. You want some uh, breakthrough in your finances. You want some breakthrough in your health and in your family's relationships and all that. There is no provision by any other means apart from through the cross. Everything we ever need in time or in eternity in every department of our lives, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, financial, temporary or eternal, everything has been provided for us through the cross. So if we've not received it, 
is because we haven't put the cross as central. There is no other basis to receive our provision. Either we receive on the basis of the cross or we do not receive at all. Paul said in, uh, in Romans 8 and verse 32, Paul said, He who spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also with him freely give us all things? That's Romans 8 verse 32. So on the basis of the cross, we can receive everything. But without the basis of the cross, we're not entitled to anything. That's the first point. No provision by any other means. And secondly, the cross is the basis of Christ's total defeat of Satan. He totally defeated Satan. Through his death, his substitutionary sacrifice for us, for our sins, his victorious resurrection and his triumphal ascension. Christ administered to Satan and his kingdom a total, permanent defeat. And there is nothing that Satan can ever do to change those facts. The cross defeated the devil. So the devil therefore has to find another strategy because these, these are unchangeable facts. There's no provision by any other means. And he was totally defeated by the cross and by the resurrection. So he, he looks for other methods to, to affect a church and take the cross away from its central position. And we'll be looking in the next videos at how the devil has substituted programs and other things into the churches to take away the central understanding of the cross. So please stay with me. It might not uh, sound like it's going to set yourself uh, on fire, you know, with enthusiasm, but this is basic. If you understand the cross, you'll be provided for. Everything will fall into place because of the centrality. It's the keystone of the whole gospel. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.